the artifact known as moire. Today I'm going to show you four ways to tackle it and dramatically improve the surface quality of your prints. The One How Duplicator i3 and its clones, the Cocoon Create Touch and the Monoprice Maker Select all suffer from the phenomenon known as moi. Moi. I've seen this in countless pictures online and my own printer has definitely suffered from it. Moi is a surface artifact created from regular extruder pulses, quite often seen as repeating patterns, especially diagonal lines across a print. Now there is another artifact called ghosting and that can also create ripples on the surface. That is caused by mechanical vibration and it settles down as the printer moves away from a feature. Moi is different in that it continues to repeat the whole way across, regardless of length and regardless of speed. So what exactly causes moi and how do we fix it? Here is our printer's hot end and just for clarity, let's remove the heater block and to help things even more, let's have a cutaway of the nozzle. Now we can see here that there's a little bit of a gap between the liner and the nozzle and that creates a zone of inaccuracy. As we extrude the filament, it will fill this zone before it comes out the end of the nozzle. The easiest way to tell if you've got a hot end like this is when you change the color. As a new one comes through, you need to extrude for quite a while and the color will very gradually change from one to the other. Now let's consider a more high quality hot end like an E3D or a Flexion. The path for the filament through the nozzle is much more direct and accurate because there's no cavity for it to pull inside. This means when you change color, the color change comes through pretty much instantaneously. Well, I said earlier it was about extruder pulses being irregular, but then I've showed you an animation about hot ends. Well, that's because the hot end is entirely relevant because it can help mask the problem. In a hot end considered more inaccurate, that zone we spoke about will take up the irregularities and help even out the pressure, reducing the sight of moi. When we switch to a more accurate hot end, however, that is no longer in effect. So any irregularities and any mishaps are passed through and can be seen on the final print. This was evident when I changed to an E3D hot end from my old Solidoodle 2 and evident in this case when I switched from the stop one how hot end to that of the Flexion. Just to make it clear, it is not the Flexion extruder or hot end's fault. It's simply the messenger and passing on the errors found elsewhere in the system. So we understand the problem, but how do we fix it? Well, I can tell you that it's not always easy. Making this video has been a series of failures and struggles and eventually I've solved most of the problem, but not entirely. Our first method is to change our steps per millimeter to avoid rounding errors. It's my belief that for most printers, you should step your steps per millimeter to a round number. That means no decimal places afterwards. This may help to prevent mathematical rounding errors and to examine the theory, let's look at an example. To simplify things, let's say our steps per millimeter for the extruder was 10.1. Every time we request a millimeter, we're asking for 10.1 steps, which is not a problem until we get to 10.5. Now the problem comes when we get to the fifth millimeter because it ends up at 50.5 and that gets rounded up to 51. Therefore our pattern has been 10, 20, 30, 40, 51. You can imagine this extra plastic is gonna show up in the print with those repeating lines that we looked at at the start. How can we avoid this? Round our steps per millimeter up or down to the nearest whole number. For me, I found this had a negligible effect, but considering it's so easy to do and doesn't cost any money, it's definitely worth a try. Our next method is to adjust the current delivered from the stepper motor drivers to the stepper motors. And let me tell you, this is not for the faint hearted. Stepper motor drivers have a voltage reference that can be adjusted by turning a trim pot on the surface. To access it for our printer, we need to open up the bottom case and then be very careful from this point onwards. Ideally, you'd use a plastic or ceramic screwdriver because if you use a metal one and you short two things together, you're gonna to fry the stepper motor driver. And in our Melzi board, that means the whole thing needs to be replaced because it's all integrated. To measure the VREF, you put your ground probe of a multimeter anywhere on one of the negative terminals in the printer and the positive one on the trim pot. You can then very carefully use that screwdriver to twist the trim pot just a little bit and that'll put the VREF up or down. Now there's two ways you can go about this and the first way is quite old school and that's by doing it by ear. What you do is this, you unplug your fans and you remove all the other noise from the room, you hit up the extruder but remove the filament so it doesn't bake in the hot end and then you'd set a manual extrusion very slowly and adjust it as it's coming out. What you're aiming for is a sweet spot where it's no longer pulsing or making excessive noise. The other way is a little more technical and that involves using maths. I've got a link to a great page in the description that gives you a formula for adjusting this. Now I really went down the rabbit hole doing this. I spent a solid night printing all types of cubes over and over trying to fix the problem. 
Again, I didn't have any really conclusive results, so I'll warn you once more, this is not for beginners and to be very careful if you give this a try. One cool thing I did learn, however, is that the printer prints quite well, sitting upside down on its side. On to step three, and fortunately this one is much easier to test, and it's playing with your extrusion speeds and multipliers. You can experiment with different speeds until you find a sweet spot for your machine. It's also worth noting that if your extrusion multiplier is set way too high, the problem will be exacerbated as shown in this little test cube. So by now I was getting a little bit despaired, so I jumped on the internet and I found a product that promised very much and I had to try. Enter the TL Smoother. This little device is very simple, very affordable, and for me, it got me the best results. And there's not nearly enough credit for the inventor of this, but the ID first appeared on a blog by Schrodinger Z. The link is in the description, and if you've got some time, read it for a full technical explanation of how these work. The basic idea is that the TL Smoother uses a series of diodes to smooth out the signal from the stepper motor driver through to the stepper motor itself. I'd like to point out that not all of these are created equal, so if you're shopping for them, look for a set that has 8 diodes instead of 4. Fortunately, these are plentiful on eBay and other places like that, and exceedingly cheap. I got this set of 5 for a little over $20. The other good news is that these are super easy to install. They're completely plug and play, they don't require their own separate power, they don't require any firmware changes or anything like that. All you have to do is plug this in line by removing one of the stepper motor plugs, putting it into here and then using the extension cable back into the original position. If you're performing this mod on the same printer as me, there's a nice link in the description where someone has designed a nice mount to replace the E part on the back of the hot end to hold this perfectly in place. Only problem with this file is there's no clear way to orientate it to avoid using a lot of support material, but apart from that, it worked really well. So how were my results having a TL smoother on the extruder? Well, finally, I made some ground. Running the exact same G-code and filament as before, the surface quality was much improved. I did notice, however, that the surface artifacts were still a little bit there on one side of the cube, but not the other. The obvious thing to do was to install two more for the X and Y stepper motors. I once again flipped the printer on its side, installed them underneath using hot glue to secure the plugs, and also a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of the TL smoother so I couldn't accidentally short them against the inside of the frame. And how were these results? Well, not really much better. I think there's still some work to do in tuning those V-refs on the stepper motor drivers and for now I'm completely had enough of it so I'll come back to it when I'm refreshed and have some more energy and enthusiasm. Even though this has been troublesome, it was still definitely worthwhile. Here's one more comparison of where I started and where I ended up. If your printer is suffering from this issue, hopefully this video has been informative and it's going to give you some nice steps to follow to get on top of the problem. I've still got a few more mods lined up for my Cocoon Create Touch, and I will have the long-awaited video on how well the Flexion Extruder prints flexibles. So thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.